Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Nick and welcome back to another episode of Technical. It's the show where Nick talks tech. I'm your host Nick, so let's talk tech. And there are quite a few videos out there already on visual distortions, so what more can I say? <laughs> Moray is an interference pattern, which happens when overlaying certain types of patterns. Hi, Editing Nick here from the future. Just wanted to pop in and let you know that throughout this video, I pronounced the word wrong. It should be moray, not moray. Also, not sure if YouTube's compression algorithms will let you see this effect very clearly. You can always go look up the Wikipedia article after this video to get a better idea of what the effect looks like. Okay, and back to our regularly scheduled programming. It's the weird, fuzzy, disorienting lines that you see when filming something like a shirt with lines that are too close together, or an insect screen inside a window. In these cases, the patterns being overlaid to create that moray effect are the pattern that we're filming, like the shirt or the insect screen, as well as the pattern of pixels that are inside the camera sensor. This isn't just limited to photos and videos, though. You can get this distortion when overlaying lots of patterns with fine lines. While well, there may be some practical uses for this kind of distortion, see Tom Scott's video linked in the description, most of the time as a filmmaker or photographer, you're gonna want to avoid this. And there are two ways cameras can make this moray pattern. In pictures and video, a camera will use horizontal scan lines to capture an image. I'll do a deep dive on progressive versus interlay scanning in another video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. But essentially, because the pattern of pixels in the camera are being read horizontally, they can sometimes misread the patterns of the subject, causing interference. The second way the moray pattern can happen is through compression. Compression algorithms try to save space on the file without losing image quality. However, sometimes that data can be put together incorrectly, especially things like small close together lines and patterns like checkerboards. This is a type of aliasing. So if you have a 24 megapixel sensor in your camera and you're recording a 1080p video, you're only using about two megapixels per frame. So you're gonna be losing a lot of data, technically around 90%. And this can cause weird artifacts to start to occur. And even cameras made by the same manufacturer can handle things slightly differently. So now that we know what moray is, how do we get rid of it? Well, you have a couple options. The first is right in camera using an anti-aliasing filter. Anti-aliasing filters are specifically designed to get rid of this kind of distortion. Some camera manufacturers put them directly into the camera, but they can make images and videos appear less sharp. So recently, lots of camera manufacturers have decided to not put them in at all. So another thing you can try is to stop down the aperture. Because the light has to travel through a smaller hole to hit the sensor, it can help to eliminate this issue. But if this doesn't work, another option might be to try and zoom in. Zooming into the pattern will make it more pronounced and can help to eliminate the artifact as well. And finally, if those tips don't help get rid of the moray pattern, you can always try my favorite thing to do, which is just film something else. Maybe you can get your actor to wear a different shirt, or maybe you can move the scene away from a window that has an insect screen in it. But sometimes you can't do this, right? Sometimes it may be crucial for your actor to wear a particular piece of clothing, or maybe you're filming a product with a weird pattern on it. Well, if that's the case, you could try to fix it in post. I'm not gonna get into exactly how to do that in this video. There are plenty of other tutorials out there already, but Photoshop and Lightroom have built-in moray brushes, which you can try out. And honestly, they work pretty well. I mean, the fact that we can have these weirdly specific problems and have an equally weirdly specific solution to them is pretty mind blowing. Like Moray, boom, gone, one click. Acne, boom, gone, one click. And having something like Content Aware to remove stuff is pretty neat too, when it works. But if you can avoid all these issues in the real world, it will help you in the long run. Computers, although magical, are not magic. They can't solve all your problems. And Moray is just one of the many challenges you'll have to face as a filmmaker or photographer. Unless, of course, that's the look you're going for, in which case, the more the better. <laughs> so here's our big question of the day. Is this important? Kinda? I don't think many people will mind visual disturbance if it's on screen for a second or in a very small part of the image. But it can be distracting for some viewers to watch. And understanding why it happens can help us in the creative process. Well, that's it for this video. Did I leave something out or get something wrong? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll put my sources in the description so you can fact check me. And while you're down there, Make sure you like the video, ring that bell for notifications, and subscribe so you don't miss another video. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bonus fact, I try not to show too many examples of the moray pattern in this video because I actually see a moray pattern when I get migraines. They appear in my field of view like some sort of aura. Now every time I see that pattern, I get kind of nauseous.